Alright, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sadko here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about Mark Carpellis, ex-CEO of Mt. Gox, because he just recently made a Reddit post of Ask Me Anything, and so people did, and they asked him everything, and he pretty much said everything, and it was, for the most part, pretty genuine. Uh, I know the whole Mt. Gox situation was pretty bad overall, but it looks like it may be coming to an end somewhat soon here. And by mean somewhat, I do mean somewhat because of the court system. We all know how slow the court system is. It's sort of a hurry up and wait sort of situation. Before we get into that, though, I'd like to talk about the price. Uh, last video or two that I made, I was talking about how the price was going up. And how I said, well, it's probably not going to last very long. Hopefully it does, but... Um, I kind of made a joke that uh, 15 minutes after I made the video that it would probably be on its way down, and eh, I was fairly close within hours, I guess, if that's close. Uh, so the price is going on back down. The other day I made the video, we were all the way up here, and we have since uh, uh, we had some whale dumps here all the way on down to 6700 uh, from a recent high of about 7500 or so, if you count the shadows, which I like to count the shadows. So, uh, on the way back down, great time to buy again. Uh, so if you had bought at the low point, sold up here, and then continue to buy at the low point, doing pretty good. Uh, I, ha I, however, personally have not been trading uh, during this bear market. Some of my coins are higher value. Some of them are valued at the, at the current value that they are. So I'm just sort of waiting for a higher price so that I can actually consolidate them all into one value rather than stacking them. Um, it's just sort of the way I do things, I suppose. Um, so I'm just waiting for uh, prices to return to begin trading again. Uh, so not too big of a deal. I've just been mining, buying, hodling, all that good stuff. Um, so we could see here that Litecoin did get um, up to a pretty impressive $137, 135 I would say on average there. Um, and now we're all the way back down to 118 again. So if we get to 110, you know who's going to be buying some Litecoin because that's such a great price to be buying in at, especially when the price gets up to 140. And you can sell for a $30 profit. Pretty good. Um, so now on to the main dealio here. Uh, it says, I don't want this, says Mt. Gox CEO Mark Carpellis. In surprise, ask me anything Reddit post. So we'll read this article here, and then we'll get to the Reddit post. Uh, so on April 4th, 2018, notorious former CEO of the now defunct Bitcoin exchange, Mt. Gox, started an Ask Me Anything post on the Reddit forum. Uh, so he explained that he's willing to answer questions concerning the controversial bankruptcy process that's taking place in Japan within the Tokyo court system. Carpellis writes that he doesn't want the remaining funds to be distributed to the Mt. Gox company at all, but unfortunately, due to the bankruptcy laws in Japan, the exchange and its owners may end up with a very large portion of money, over a billion dollars to be relatively specific. Uh, so Mark Carpellis has reached out to the Bitcoin community to let them know that he isn't pleased with the way the Mt. Gox bankruptcy is going. Essentially, Carpellis explains that the way the process works is the shareholders will get paid the amount agreed upon by the courts, which is less than $500 per Bitcoin. And Mt. Gox could walk away with over a billion dollars. A former Mt. Gox CEO details that he doesn't want the money, and he hopes this case can soon uh, come to a close. Um, so we will get to the Reddit post here. It says, many of you know or remember me, especially recently since the Mt. Gox bankruptcy has been allegedly linked with Bitcoin price drops in 2017 and 2018, February, uh, since taking over many uh, most active Bitcoin exchange in 2011. I ran Mt. Gox until filing for, for civil rehabilitation on February 28, 2014, which became bankruptcy less than two months later because of a large amount of Bitcoins went missing. Since then, Four years have passed, and Bitcoin Mt. Gox, or excuse me, Mt. Gox, is still in bankruptcy today. I've been arrested, released under bail after a little less than one year, and I'm now trying to assist Mt. Gox getting into civil rehabilitation. I did my best trying to grow the ecosystem by running the biggest exchange at the time. It had big problems, but still managed to hang in there for a while quite long ago, even when, while the rest of the ecosystem caught up. At the end of the day, uh, the methods I chose to try to get Mt. Gox out of its trouble ended up being insufficient, insufficiently executed, or just plain wrong. I know I didn't handle the last stressful days of the outdrawn and painful Mt. Gox collapse very well. I can only be humble about that in, in, in hindsight. Uh, once again, I'm sorry. 
Japanese bankruptcy law has a particularly nasty outcome here, and I want to address this up front. As creditors claim were registered, those claims were registered in the valuation of Japanese yen on the bankruptcy date. That's the only way Japanese bankruptcy law can work. So most bankruptcy laws around the world operate this way for that matter. Uh, this means that the claims can be paid back in full, and there will still be over 160,000 Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash in assets in the, in the Gox estate. The way bankruptcy laws work is that as if there are any assets remaining after the creditors have been paid in full, then those assets are distributed to the shareholders as part of the liquidation. That's the only way any bankruptcy law can reasonably work, and yet in this case it produces an egregiously disastful, uh, distasteful outcome in that the shareholders of Mt. Gox would walk away with a value of over 160,000 Bitcoin as a result of what happened. I don't want this. I don't want this billion dollars from day one. I never expected to receive anything from this bankruptcy. The fact that today um, this is a possibility is an aberration, and I believe that it's my responsibility to make sure it doesn't happen. One of the ways to do this would be civil rehabilitation, and as it seems, most creditors agree with this. I am doing my best to make it happen. I do not want to become instantly rich. I do not ask for forgiveness. I just want to see this end as soon as possible with everyone receiving their share of what they had on Mt. Gox. So everyone, myself included, can get some closure. Then he uh, goes on to say, I'm an engineer at heart. I want to build things. I like seeing what I build being useful and people being happy using what I build. My drive from day one has been to push the limits of what is technically possible. And this is the main reason I liked it and have been involved with Bitcoin in the first place. While I took over Mt. Gox, I never imagined things would end this way, and I'm forever sorry for everything that's taken place and all the effect it had on everyone involved. Hopefully I can make from what I learned uh, in this experience useful to the community as a whole so there can be at least something positive in the end. Ask me anything if you like. Edit uh, with this uh, coming to all. There have been an overwhelming number of messages, questions, etc. I will continue responding for a little while, but probably won't be able to respond to new questions. It is starting to be late here, and I've been spending the last few hours typing. So uh, he is uh, Magical Tux. So if you guys want to check this out, it is on the Bitcoin Reddit. It's the number one Reddit, or you can just, um, you know, Google I am Mark Capellis and ask me anything, and you will find this very, very quickly. It is both on Reddit all um bitcoin and btc reddit uh so he does say a lot of things you know um uh people people saying your, your trustee trustee is destroying bitcoin with the sell-offs you should give customers their bitcoin back the trustee was appointed by the bankruptcy court and i have no control over this process at this point i only wish to see bitcoins return to all mount gox creditors as soon as possible um so there's a lot of a lot of good questions here. Probably too many for me to even go through. Um, so basically, what he wants to do with his share of Bitcoin is essentially just give them back. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to receive like physically Bitcoin, or if he's just going to receive a bunch of money him personally. Now there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of investors or what have you, members of the team that will be receiving all of that. Um, all of that money, not just him. So he's not going to receive a total of $1 billion. There's going to be taxes and things like that as well. So what I suggest, him to buy Bitcoin, raise the price of it, and then give that Bitcoin away or give it to charity or something like that. Or give it back to more, um, more people who lost money on the uh, Bitcoin disaster as it was only valued at $500 at the time when uh, in reality the Bitcoin should be valued at thousands and thousands of dollars. So here's a nice uh, long question. This one was pretty good. It says, why did, you not mo why did you not monitor your cold wallets and match them with balances to ensure you had not lost any Bitcoin? A simple list of all Bitcoin addresses with a script to calculate total Bitcoin balance and some amount I said multiple reasons from that, from the security concept of cold wallets to others I cannot comment on yet. Um, you know, so who did you tell that Mt. Gox was insolvent before it was announced? There were people in the know and 10K Bitcoin uh, dump on Bitstamp shortly before you announced it. Only a limited number of employees are lawyers, the court, and soon-to-be trustee. Only a limited number of employees. All righty. So this, so these questions are actually really good and were answered very poorly, in my opinion. Uh, the leaked Mt. Gox crisis draft mentions a 200k injection to get Mt. Gox back and running again. What was that? No, what was that number based on? No idea. This document wasn't made by me, but I'd guess it was an estimate on how much would be needed to keep Mt. Gox alive. Uh, in the IRC logs, you, you're talking about 
the missing 95k Bitcoin. So you knew you were insolvent in 2011. You wrote that you had several strategies and plans. What concrete did you uh, do to try to recover the missing 95k? Missing 95k Bitcoin doesn't equal being insolvent. That's actually a rather complex issue currently being discussed in court. So I can't enter the details at this point. So can't answer that one either. Um, so why did you spend time on Bitcoin Cafe, fancy door locks, and personally creating Yuba keys instead of focusing on fixing this massive debt? I've been doing a lot of things to keep the company alive. I didn't spend as much time as rumored on the cafe. I guess what you call fancy door locks is a security system used in 2012 office and wasn't especially time consuming either. And as to creating Yuba keys, I had to create the process. So of course, I'd spend time on this in 2011, 2012, making the company work in this way is the only way to solve the massive debt you mentioned. Now, question number six, why did you blame malleability for the loss of 800K Bitcoin when studies show that it was only accounted for less than 2K Bitcoin loss? I never blame malleability for the loss of all missing Bitcoins. Alrighty. So there it goes again. So I, I kind of like this one. How is uh, spending a year in jail? Poor service, bad food, would not recommend. Uh, so would you? do you think you'll ever go to jail again? I am innocent. Pro uh, pro proving this in front of a Japanese court is a challenge, but I'm not giving up. So... Um, you know, lots of good question. It goes on and on and on. And, you know, he, he continues to answer for quite a while until finally uh, his answers sort of stop. And apparently he must have uh, called it quits for the evening. But quite interesting. Um, definitely give this a read, particularly if you were those who had lost Bitcoin in Mt. Gox. Um, very good read indeed. And lots of good drama, too. So OKX fights back market manipulation rumors following painful futures contract rollbacks. So OKX is a, an exchange. They had a futures. Um, uh, they had. They were massively hurt by futures liquidations, and it was quite frankly all jacked up. And they did a rollback uh, on their exchange, and um, well, that didn't go that smooth either. So let's read this. Okay, X uh, has made another announcement regarding his decision to roll back futures contracts after clients were hurt by massive liquidations. The company apologized again for the inconvenience, tried to address rumors regarding the incident, and threatened to sue anyone spreading them. Because that's how you prove you're innocent. Is go right out and say, hey, I'm going to sue you if you say anything different. All righty. Fair enough. Whoa. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's, let's settle down now. You like you seem a little jumpy there. Okay, X, the Chinese-run cryptocurrency exchange. That makes sense that it's Chinese-run. Uh, this makes a lot of sense. That's basically you could basically stop the article there and go. Mm, okay, because anything in China, if you invest in anything in China, uh, prepare to lose money because there's no way that you could sue them um, because of international laws, and it's very difficult to do that. Uh, and you would need millions of dollars to even start suing somebody in China. Uh, so good luck. So that's why I invest in nothing in China. That's why I don't buy ASICs from China or anything like that. Uh, so it's trying to fend off rumors circulating the region's online Bitcoin trading community. The company was issued, uh, has issued a new clarification of recent events that it hopes will restore clients' confidence in its operations. Accusations regarding its recent rollback of Bitcoin futures contracts alleging that OKX inter uh, intentionally triggered forced liquidations by manipulating prices were the team's top concern. Uh, so framing its actions as part of an obligation to protect clients from the market manipulation. OKX states the price of Bitcoin quarterly futures contract was manipulated by a group of people, making it fall significantly below the Bitcoin index to protect the interest of our customers and to eliminate the adverse effects induced. We decided to roll back the futures trading data. The company further attempts to reissue, uh, reassure traders that it, ha it has uh, no incentive to see them lose funds by explaining that OKX provides a platform to allow customers to trade in order books, uh, but we are not directly involved in the trades. Moreover, all of our transactions are public. We as a trading platform do not make profit from the price volatility, but generate income from trading platforms. So we have no reason to, and we'll never have a reason to manipulate the prices of the market. So uh, there was a PR disaster following that. Um, Quite the disaster. I'm glad I wasn't on OKX. Uh, so, we got uh, Bitcoin's latest crash is nothing new. 
And it is certainly not. That's what I've been saying for a while here. So the first quarter of 2018 is on record as the worst in Bitcoin's price history. Just shy of $115 billion in U.S. dollar in market capitalization has been erased. Nearly half of its price from the start of the year is gone. For those relatively new to the ecosystem, it might seem like the time to panic or at least cash out what's left in their initial investments. As a recent visualization study by financial information aggregators, howmuch.net shows the world's most popular cryptocurrency just might make a comeback. So Bitcoin's recent crash is familiar territory for veterans. Um, so how much .NET recently published a visualization of Bitcoin's awful price crashes titled Visualization of History uh, Visualizi Visualizing, oh my god, the history of Bitcoin crashes are hodlers prepared for the next bull run. It seeks to put into perspective the cyclical nature of the decentralized currency's volatility. The latest Bitcoin crash has some investors believing the end of days are near. The post author Paul began once bullish hodlers are commit and committed individuals now voice their concerns and fears that this crash indicates that the cryptocurrency market may be faced with a new normal. While the latest crash has been painful, it is best to step back and assess the current state of Bitcoin relative to its past. Bitcoin has crashed many times over the past several years, but how does that uh, with the latest uh, downturn compared to the steep sell-offs? So I've showed this numerous times on my channel. Uh, it's, it's a really great visualization. It just shows all the uh, major Bitcoin crashes over time. And you can see there's a lot of them. And I'm sure every single one of these crashes, people were like, Bitcoin's dead, 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 and Bitcoin's dead. So we'll see another one sooner or later. And it won't be dead. Um... Anyone who bought crypto in December and is upset because three months later it hasn't worked out for them should probably sell and move on to another asset class. Time to once again weed out the quick get-richers. Uh, the get-rich-quickers, rather. Um, so I, I definitely agree on that. So it's nothing new. So far, the current correction seems in line with the asset's history. As the visual displays, corrections usually last just a few days with a sizable chunk under four days. But there have been longer stretches for sure. From late 2013 through early 2015 and that course of course includes all of 2014 the lag in price lasted 411 days the next longest is our current malaise and that's nowhere near the dire straits of the triple digit days the point is that crashes have become relatively common throughout the cryptocurrency market which is known for its swift volatility uh, it is important to turn to data in the facts in times of turmoil rather than relying on one's emotions, the team insists. It might be true those newer investors of late last year are gone and gone forever, but they probably had no business being involved with cryptocurrency in the first place. And while the present streak could very well go on for some time still, those passionate about the project, such as Bitcoin, are mostly in for the long haul. So... You know, if you're one of the people who sold all of your coin and, you know, gave up on crypto, you're one of those people that you, you never had you never had any business being an investor in the first place. You just gave it a shot. You said it wasn't for you. You gave up way too early. That's not how investing works. Uh, so right now the price is extremely low. This is when people should be buying. The price should never get this low, but it is this low and nobody's buying. It's really astonishing. Because everybody buys when the price of Bitcoin is fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars. Everybody's buying, but when it's at a nice, cool sixty-eight hundred dollars, which is three over three times as less, uh, about, well, approximately. Let's just go three times as less than the all-time high. You can get three times the Bitcoin. So if you wanted to put down twenty thousand to get one of those twenty thousand dollar Bitcoins, you could now get three Bitcoin for that price approximately we're just going we're, we're we're averaging here people so you could get three times the amount but no nobody wants to get three times the amount of bitcoin they want to buy bitcoin when it's at seventeen thousand dollars when they'll only get one bitcoin for seventeen thousand dollars instead of like three bitcoin for when the price is at its all-time low uh so it doesn't make any sense uh people have no investing clue whatsoever. Uh, this is the time to buy. This, this is the good time. So it's a time to buy because if everybody's buying in at $17,000 and everybody's jumping on a train, how much money do you expect everybody to make? Do you expect everybody to get off that train once it stops as millionaires? Do you think everybody can be a millionaire? No, absolutely not. It's just not going to happen. It's just the same with... Uh, uh, here's a good example baseball card collectors baseball card collectors so if you are a football or a baseball card collector you know exactly what i'm talking about here the other people that you, you can go sit down in the corner for now and just listen to the story 
As a child, I collected many, many cards. I still have a tub filled with them, probably 20,000 cards, um, ranging anywhere from the 70s to the 90s. Um, and everybody knows that 90s era trading cards for sports are worth nothing, basically nothing. Uh, the reason is is because they were overproduced and everybody at the time was collecting them all the kids and things like that in in the 80s and the 90s were collecting them and they all knew based on the cards from the 40s 50s and 60s that their cards one day are going to be worth a lot of money right but the problem was is everybody was doing it all the kids were doing it i remember going to elementary school we would all bring our book of football cards and stuff where we would trade them for our favorite players and things like that. I'll try to make wheeling and dealing. And when, we all thought that one day our cards were going to be worth a lot. But the problem is, is that they were overproduced and everybody was doing it. And everybody had the idea. Here's a key thing. Everybody had the idea that 40 years later, these cards are going to be worth a lot of money. Right. So they all kept them in pristine condition. Right? We all kept them in books. We all kept them in boxes and things like that, all well kept. However, the, here's the difference. In the 50s and 40s and, and, and farther back, baseball cards were produced in far fewer numbers. And kids would put them in their bicycles so that their bicycles would sound like dirt bikes when they were going down the road because it would smack on the spokes. Um of your uh, of your of your wheel and so kids they were just fun for kids back in the 50s and 60s nobody was expecting to hold on to these for ye for 30 40 years right so nobody had that mentality then so they got destroyed or they were produced in very low numbers or you got them in a pack of cigarettes or you got them in a pack of gum and so you know you would eat your gum and you'd look at your card and maybe you'd throw it away as a kid because it was just it just didn't mean anything to you so there's a totally different mentality and that really sticks with crypto because now everybody's getting into crypto and everybody wants to buy in when it's going up and if you think about it not everybody can be a winner you just can't. Not everybody can scratch off a lottery ticket and be the million dollar winner. It's not feasible. It's, it's just not possible. The market cap would be way too high. It, it can't be done. It can't be done. Um, so when the prices are low, everybody wants to get out. But that's when you should get in because when everybody else is getting out and you get in and you pick up coin at a low price and then when it goes back up and everybody starts going back in now, it's too late. They're not going to make much money. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out that article on Reddit about Mark Carpellis. Uh, it is pretty interesting. Uh, a lot of the comments are pretty good, and a lot of his responses are pretty good. Some of his responses are pretty, uh, pretty bad, um, and don't give a lot of information, but uh, he is doing the best he can, I suppose. Um, terrible situation, but uh, I still think that he should take all of his Bitcoin, uh, and even he said it himself that he would like to give it out but all of his money, I think he should pump it into Bitcoin, pump the price of Bitcoin, and then either uh, lose the Bitcoin, burn it, or get rid of it, or give it to charity, or give it to the people who lost Bitcoin. Um, and that way he can actually repump the price of Bitcoin up, and uh, we can all just end this once and for all, and go on from there. But I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.